guys it's been a while but i am back and i'm wearing black today in support of our south african women who are being raped and murdered at a shocking rate so south african women are already taking a stand and i just want to say thank you to everyone out there who is supporting this cause but i'm here to talk about my lime progress the last time i updated you guys i had come to cape town south africa from Abu Dhabi where I live most of the time and I had found out that I not only have Lyme remaining but it had increased in numbers so I just wanted to update you on what has happened since then so I arrived here on the 4th of July the 4th or 5th of July I think and then I saw my doctor on the 8th of July and that's when I got the news and then I posted a video to inform all of you guys I was absolutely heartbroken and devastated as you can imagine and the response was overwhelmingly positive and supportive and I'm so grateful to all the people out there who support me and for your appreciation for me sharing my journey because it's really not easy to put yourself in such a vulnerable position but I believe very strongly that there's a reason for this happening to me and I want to make the most of it and help I have a very strong urge to help and if I don't share my journey I feel like it'll almost go to waste and I learn so much from following other people's journeys so yeah excuse me today I went to reflexology yesterday for the first time proper reflexology and it's so powerful I'm feeling the side effects today really extreme so I'm just gonna take it very relaxed today but I do want to update you so here we go so after I posted that video I know I said that the feedback was overwhelmingly positive and supportive but there was one group on Facebook that kind of like completely denied that I still have Lyme disease they like wanted to tell me that I don't still have Lyme disease and it's actually a group that's set up in favor of the clinic so I didn't speak badly about the clinic at all and I still recommend it but what I want to say is that there is no one treatment that's going to work for everybody so if someone is telling you no you still you don't have Lyme disease and you do it's almost like you're reliving the trauma of going to doctors and them telling you there's nothing wrong with you when you know that there is it was actually really emotional for me and the bullying was really extreme so now i know what happens when people speak out about certain treatments that are supported by certain people in the community they get bullied and this is not acceptable i'm sharing my truth and I'm doing it in order to help people. And I will always stick by the theory that there is no one size fits all. Our bodies are all so different. You can't possibly put everybody into the same treatment and expect everybody to be cured or everybody to be in remission. It's not gonna happen. So having said that, that's something that I've really just learned on my Lyme journey, is that everything I'm sharing, I'm not telling you, okay, you must do this. This is something that you have to do. I'm just showing you my journey, what's working for me, what's not working for me. So I have tried to investigate and get to the bottom of why this treatment in Germany didn't work for me. And I did do muscle testing to kind of ask my subconscious questions of what was happening. If you guys don't know what muscle testing is, I'll do a whole other video on it. I did used to post my sessions, but unfortunately I had to take them down because you're not supposed to post anything online of doctors who are treating. So I don't post anymore, but I will do a video on muscle testing and I can safely say that for me that has been the best tool in my healing. So basically what the muscle testing revealed is that although I have a lot of biofilms, it's not due to not busting the biofilms properly that the hypothermia didn't kill my Lyme. So that isn't the reason why my Lyme didn't die in the hypothermia. And yes, the group did bash me for making a false claim and saying that maybe it was my biofilms getting in the way that they didn't bust properly. And I wasn't making any claims. I was just sharing my thoughts because that's what I do. I'm not a doctor. I share my journey and I share my thoughts and theories and we get to the bottom of this thing. It's like a whole lot of layers. So that wasn't the reason. And the other thing that I thought might be the case is that I had parasites and Lyme within the parasites and that the hypothermia killed the Lyme around the parasites. 
and then my body was strong enough to actually kill the parasites after the hypothermia and that it released the lime afterwards but that also wasn't what happened so I haven't gotten to the bottom of why hypothermia didn't work for me but one thing that I have discovered is that the treatment needs to be individualized so basically when you go there they just give everyone the same treatment and it really needs an individual approach especially for the cost that you're paying for the treatment so that would be my feedback for that I still recommend Clinic St. George. A lot of people say that it is their answer. And of course, I believe them. I believe people when they speak. But it's up to you guys to decide whether it's worth the risk for you. Because it might work for you and it might not work for you. So you just got to weigh out if it's worth it to spend all that money and take that risk. And then the other thing that I would really suggest is muscle testing to see if your body is ready. Always before doing a treatment. Just make sure that it is right for your body. That would be my main suggestion, personally, from what I found has been helpful. So what my doctor did when I came to Cape Town is he established that I did have lime in spirochete form, which is quite a good thing. And then I had some lime also in L form, which is a really bad thing. So he put me on some pulsed doxy just for about three weeks to get rid of some of the spirochetes, which it can do. And then... I experienced an extreme Herxheimer reaction from that. It was so scary. And I actually also got really sick. I got um, bronchitis and I actually ended up in the hospital. I was in the hospital for two nights and I Herxed a lot. So this just goes to show I still have Lyme. But the good news is I don't have any co-infections anymore. I have no co-infections just the lime left and I'll tell you how much lime I have left at the end so after I got out of the hospital I was put on the new breakthrough drug for lime this is the new thing um, that's making waves in the lime community and that is disulfiram or antabuse which was a drug that was actually made for alcoholics because if you drink alcohol on it you'll get really really ill and usually alcoholics don't really experience any side effects from this drug but people with Lyme disease who go on this drug experience extreme side effects but it's actually from the Lyme dying off and I started off on a very small dose so you have to start off on a small dose and slowly work your way up because the Herxheimer effect can be very strong on this drug so basically I started on a dose of 125 milligrams every third day and I did this for a month and I was really, really tired. Oh my gosh, the day after I took a dose, I would be extremely tired and I would just sleep so well. That's one thing, you sleep so well. So it actually cured my insomnia. So I was sleeping really, really well. And eventually the side effects started wearing off. So the tiredness got less and less. And it was actually like a different kind of tiredness. It was almost like I was just completely knocked out and I could actually sleep. Usually with Lyme, I feel tired but wired. I'm like buzzing, but I'm still like exhausted. But this was like a tiredness where I actually did sleep. And I would sleep like a log. So when the tiredness started wearing off, there are some things that I've noticed that have improved. I'm talking so much. I don't know why. I'm just like blabbing. And I think it's because my mind is clearer and I feel like my spirits are higher. I feel a lot happier. My mood is lifted. And I just feel stronger in general. I'm still not strong. I wouldn't say I'm strong, but I feel a lot stronger in general. And I feel really motivated and I'm up for doing things. I'm not anxious like I used to be and panicky about actually going out and doing things and working. If I feel like my body is struggling, I'll say, okay, I'm gonna take it easy now. But other than that, I'm not like wanting to rush to the hospital, rush to doctors and I'm not panicking so I'm so grateful for that so so grateful and another thing is Cape Town has the most amazing healers I am so blessed with amazing amazing healers people who use natural methods people who are so knowledgeable so I just feel really really blessed and Cape Town South Africa is a good place to be if you're trying to heal so I guess now I'll tell you how much time I have left <laughs> and how the disulfiram has been working so when I arrived in Cape Town I had 85% lime left the numbers had gone up like crazy because I thought that Clinic St. George had cured me and killed all my Lyme 
and so I wasn't so strict with limiting sugar and carbohydrates and I was taking chances so my lime grew and now my lime is at 31% I have 31% left as of my last appointment which was a few days ago and I have another one next week and I just have CFO in my gut which is also going down the numbers and that's all that's all I still have obviously I still have some damage which is what my reflexology is helping with so I have a very slow thyroid my thyroid is basically on holiday and my kidneys are obviously struggling that's given and my stomach I have digestion issues I have all of these things that people with Lyme have but it's all slowly improving and I'm slowly getting my strength back and my excitement and my zest for life back and I just can't wait for the future I know that's like such a weird thing to say and I don't want to speak too soon because every time I put something out there it kind of like turns on me um, but that's how I truly feel I feel so excited and I feel like I'm almost there it's happened so quickly from 85% to 31% in well since the beginning of July until now so or since the 8th of July until now so that's pretty darn good it's like basically medically impossible but it's happening for me so I just needed to share that with you and I think that this new drug might just be something really really useful once again apologies for being absent for so long basically what I've been doing in Cape Town is I've been working I have been wedding planning because my wedding's in Cape Town in April and I have been healing so I've been doing healing treatments ozone therapy I've been on the Vima I've been doing some acupuncture in my ear. I don't really know what it's called. I think the needles are a bit bigger, but it goes in the ear. And I've been doing some reflexology recently, and then obviously seeing my doctor who is treating my Lyme. So I've been really active with the healing and obviously really active with everything else. And then in my downtime, I take that time to rest. So that's why I haven't really been updating and also it's really bad for healing if somebody gives you such negative feedback that comes in the form of actual bullying so I think it's best that I just took a little bit of a break but I still have so much to share and I feel like I just want to make a thousand videos in one sitting because there's really so much information that I still need to share like for example the way EMFs affect your Lyme the importance of organic eating because of the chemicals in our food, the importance of staying away from chemicals and products, staying away from things like fluoride, all of these things I still want to share with you in detail. I actually keep a little tag on my skin all the time that blocks out EMF exposure, so that's also been helping with my healing. So it's a whole lot of different things put into one, it's like a whole change of lifestyle and I use only organic products and you've just got to make sure that all of these things in our modern lifestyles that weaken our bodies are eliminated from your life as much as possible it's not possible to stay away from it completely but you have to just take measures to eliminate it as much as possible because it really does count all of this stuff really weakens our immune system and our bodies so it really does count Something that I forgot to mention is I am still taking Mimosa Pudica for parasites and I am still taking the antifungal for my fungus in my gut. And then I'm taking a Biofilm Buster, Serapeptase, I think that's how you say it, I don't know. I'll write it on the screen. And then what else am I taking? Zinc, Biotin, B6. They help so much with my anxiety and fear because I had no zinc basically in my body, no biotin, no B6 in my body. So that really helps. And I think that's that for the update for today. I will go more into detail on disulfiram in another video. And then also I want to talk about my Rife machine because I deleted my Rife machine video because it had the mention of some doctor's names. So. There have been some requests for me to do a video on my Rife machine, so I will do that. I swear I'm getting to it. 
And then as I say, I want to talk about also lifestyle changes. So that's all coming up as well as updates on how I'm doing. I'm returning to Abu Dhabi in about, I think, two or three weeks, like two weeks. And I'll keep you in the loop with what's happening. But I feel like it's going to be exciting updates. And I really hope that it will continue to be exciting updates. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'm sending love and healing to all of you. And once again, thank you so much for all of your support, all of your messages. I absolutely love this community that we have going. You're all inspiring and you're all so encouraging. And that's what we need. People who truly understand and can offer their experience and their advice. I'll see you next time. Bye.